Good morning and welcome. Besides my own congregations of St Mary's and St James, there are, I know, others who are joining me each day to pray. We have, I believe, a wonderful opportunity in these days of lockdown to draw nearer to the Lord Jesus. In Isaiah 55 we read, Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him while he is near. Of course, God has promised never to leave us or forsake us. But there are seasons in which he pours out a measure of his grace that enables his church to be captured into the heavenly realms, to glimpse his plans and purposes, to hear his voice anew and to be restored to that which has been lost or broken. As an Anglican priest, I use the model of prayer that we are using today daily. But there are, of course, lots of other ways of spending time in God's presence. We can do that in silence, while reading the scriptures or worshipping with music. And so, my sisters and brothers, whatever tradition you are from, please would you take this opportunity to be guided by the Lord, to take his hand, and to be led afresh into his presence. I'm going to read again from where we left off yesterday, the book entitled The Light Invisible, and the story is in the convent chapel. Here were these nuns, as no doubt they and their younger sisters are still, without one single thing that, in the world's opinion, makes life worth living. There is practically perpetual silence. There are hours to be spent in the chapel, no luxuries, no amusements, no power of choice. They are always rather hungry and rather tired at the very least. And yet they are not sacrificing present happiness to future happiness, as the world always supposes. But they are intensely and radiantly happy now in this present time. I don't know what further proof anyone wants of who our Lord is than that men and women find the keenest and in fact their only joy in serving him and belonging to him. I remember that something of this sort was in my mind as I went across the courtyard beside this motherly old lady with her happy quiet face. She had been over fifty years in a religious order. At the door she stopped. I will not come in, she said, but you will find me in the parlour when you come out. And she turned and went back with the collie walking slowly beside her, his golden plumed tail raised high against her black habit. The door was partly open, but a thick curtain hung beyond. I pushed it quietly aside and stepped in. It seemed very dark at first, in contrast to the brilliant sunshine outside. But I presently saw that I was kneeling before a high, iron-barred screen in which there was no door. On the left, in the further corner of the chapel, glimmered a blue light in a silver lamp before a statue of the Virgin Mary. Opposite me rose up the steps before the high altar, but not far away because, as you remember, the chapel had once been the transept of a church, and the east wall in the centre of which the high altar stood was longer than both the south wall where the second altar stood and the modern brick wall that closed in on the north. A slender crucifix in black and white and six thin tapers rose high above the altar. I said a prayer or two and then I noticed for the first time a dark outline rising in the centre of the space before the altar. For a moment I was perplexed and then I saw it was the nun whose hour it was for intercession. Her back was turned to me as she knelt at the footstool. Her black veil fell in rigid lines on her shoulders. There she knelt perfectly motionless, praying. I had not and have not a notion as to her age. As I knelt there, though, I thought deeply, wondering as to the nun's age, how long she had been professed, when she would die, whether she was happy. And I'm afraid I thought more of her than of him who was so near. Then a kind of anger seized me, as I compared in my mind the life of a happy good woman in the world with that of this poor creature. I pictured the life as one so often sees in the homes of a mother with her children growing up, her hands busy with healthy homework, her life glorified by a good man's love. 
As she grows older, passing from happy stage to happy stage, comforting, helping, sweetening every soul she meets. Was it not for this that women and men too, I thought, rebuking myself, were made? Then I thought of the sour life of the cloisters, as loveless and desolate as the cold walls themselves. I even thought if there was a strange peculiar joy in the religious, religious life, even if there is an absence of sorrows and anxieties. Yet, after all, surely the contemplative life is useless and barren. The active life may be well enough if the prayers and the discipline issue in greater efficiency, if the priest is more fervent when he ministers outside, and the sister of charity more charitable. Yes, I thought, the active religious life is reasonable enough, but the contemplative? After all, isn't it essentially selfish and a sin against society? Possibly it may have been necessary when the wickedness of the world was more fierce to protest against it by this retirement. But not now, not now. How can the lump be leavened if the leaven is withdrawn? How can a soul serve God by forsaking the world which he made and loves? And so, said the priest, turning to me again, I went on, poor ignorant fool, thinking that this woman who knelt in front of me was less useful than myself, and that my words and actions and sermons and life did more to advance God's kingdom than her prayers. And then, at that moment, I reached the climax of folly and pride, for God was good to give me just this little light. We will stop there and resume with the story tomorrow. And so let us pray together. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is athirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you on the watches of the night, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so our psalm this morning is Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty shall say to the Lord, my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and you shall be safe under his wings. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in the darkness or of the sickness that destroys at noonday. Though a thousand fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold to see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your stronghold, there shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your home. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. 
you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because they have set their love upon me, therefore I will deliver them. I will lift them up because they know my name. They will call upon me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and bring them to honour. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And so our first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 45. Then Joseph could not restrain himself any more before those who stood by him, and he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. And so they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years the famine has been in the land, and there are still five years in which there will be neither ploughing nor harvesting. But God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh, the lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me and do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near to me, you and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty for there are still five years of famine. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so our second reading is taken from John's Gospel. Chapter 17. Jesus spoke these words and lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life as to many that you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given to me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was.
we say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us pray. Gracious God, rejoicing in your blessings and trusting in your loving care for all, we bring to you our prayers for the world, the Church and ourselves. We pray for the created world, for those who rebuild when things have been destroyed, for those who fight hunger, poverty and disease. For those who are working to bring relief and aid to refugees and those fleeing from war, drought, flood and famine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, for those who have authority and influence in our national life. For our politicians, public servants. For those who work to keep the peace and foster mutual understanding and respect. We pray for those who teach, heal and care, and all who give freely of themselves in the service of others. May we all be sensitive to what is right and good, and strengthened to resist temptation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people in need, those for whom life is a bitter struggle, those whose lives are clouded by death or loss, pain, disability, discouragement or fear. May they know the warmth, the comfort and the assurance of your love, that they may go forward with confidence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for the church throughout the world, with all its diversity and differing challenges. May all who profess your name learn to work and witness together, surrounded by that great company of heaven. We pray for all those at St Mary's and St James. Protect them, Lord. Give them strength for all that they seek to be and to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you are the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. And so we remember before you those who have died. Lord, you turn our darkness into light, and it is in your light that we too shall see light. Grant, Lord, that we who are baptised into the death of your Son, Jesus, may continually put to death our evil desires and be buried with him, that through the grave and gate of death we may pass into our joyful resurrection through his merits. Amen. And so, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us.
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.